Hi friends, and welcome to the Shits and Gigs podcast, where the vibe is high, the humor gets raunchy, and things get spicy when we talk about food. This is your host, Meg Davis, and I am quite literally in my bathtub right now because I recently made a promise to myself that I would get back into my routine of doing a regular Epsom salt bath because your girl's muscles be tight AF, and that is just one habit that I really, really miss from when I was pre-motherhood. So here we are getting recommitted to the bath and nothing keeps me more committed than tying in work. Toxic trait, but it works and there's nothing more that I love than connecting with other people. So to be here in my Epsom salt bath talking to all of you guys is definitely a perk on my part. So my intention for these bath bomb sessions is to drop in with some knowledge potentially, but more so maybe just start some random conversation around things that pop into my squirrel ass brain throughout the week and we can just have fun with each other um, after you guys listen to obviously the recording. Feel free to comment if you relate to anything in the comments below, and let's have some fun getting to know each other through these random topics. But to kick things off tonight, I would really love to dive into my top tips for getting back into your routine after the holidays, and by that I mean a healthy balanced routine that revolves around eating nourishing foods, moving your body, and keeping that mind nice and positive. So my first go-to habit is drinking your water. Ideally, you want to be consuming half your body weight in ounces per day. So especially when it comes to the holidays where, where or just special occasions in general, where you are more than likely intaking a lot more sodium than usual, maybe sweet treats that cause indigestion. So keeping up your water is really honestly a huge power move when it comes to the holidays and special occasions. So drink up, bitches. <laughs> and number two, getting right back into your eating routine if you already had one established. Obviously, if we're starting from ground zero, that's a whole nother conversation. And maybe just pick three foods that are going to make you feel really awesome and commit to eating those for your first week in. However, if you already had an established routine, girlfriend or guy friend, you ate out for a holiday or maybe you had a random meal that made you feel shitty. Like, just get back into it in the next day. The The idea that people get so tripped up sometimes, I mean, myself included, especially back in the day, my mindset is definitely a little more balanced because of some things that I've just kind of created in my mind over, all right, going on a tangent, back on track, squirrel brain. <laughs> um, when it comes to just getting back on track, just fucking do it. Don't stress yourself out about it. You eat out on the Saturday, maybe you have a crappy Sunday, Monday, go for it. Just get back into your routine like those days didn't even happen. It doesn't even have to be the whole like weekend to entering Monday mindset. When, no matter what day you got tripped up on, the next day, just pick again, maybe three habits that you know make you feel really incredible and just get right back into it. So don't stress, don't overthink, just get right back into whatever makes you feel so, so good. My third thing is movement, whether that be intentional stretching or going for a walk, maybe parking further in the parking lot or taking the stairs instead of the elevator, going to the gym, doing an at-home workout, squatting while you're cooking your meat, like your dinner like I do, um, whatever it is, move your body intentionally every single day because you will feel so amazing. One thing that I'm really focusing on right now is picking up my step game because there are really great benefits to doing 7,500 plus or even 10K a day, especially as far as cardiovascular health goes. And I, to be honest, average around 5,000 a day unless I'm at work and I have access to that amazing walking pad. Look it up. It's a game changer if you can get one at home or at your office. Um, But yeah, steps are really a struggle for me. So focusing on that is big. A lot of people have the watches that track your steps. I broke up with my watch. Don't get on my back about it. It's just a thing. I didn't want to deal with it anymore. I'm trying to decrease the notifications, some like work-life balance, but your girl brought back the pedometer. So I got that clipped to my waist. 
most days obviously the downside to that is that it's like not like an accessory like a watch where you miss it if it's not there so there are those days where i am not able to track my steps and when i notice i don't have my pedometer i just again try to be intentional about the way i'm moving my body throughout the day if i notice i'm stagnant i stand up maybe i'll go up and down the stairs a couple times or do like a lap around the house whatever it is just move Number four, this one is kind of a huge power, or it is a huge power move, but it's kind of a commitment, tracking your food. I know it sounds daunting to do, and I am definitely not perfect at it. However, I do believe that tracking your food is a huge game changer when it comes to feeling your absolute best. For me personally, I love when I'm in, or on a roll rather, with tracking because I find that I'm often lacking ingredients, which makes a lot of sense because I notice when I'm not tracking, I tend to be more fatigued or hungry, or maybe I'm like craving food more often because what I'm grabbing out on on a whim is not necessarily the best choice or balance, most balanced choice that I could be making. So then with lacking ingredients in my day, my blood sugar is all over the place because I'm not paying attention. If this is something you experienced, if you also experience this, tracking your food could be something really cool to dive into in 2024. And like I said, it can be and feel like a commitment. However, once you get in the rhythm of tracking and you have maybe certain foods that you eat often, there are lots of different ways that you can utilize these apps in such a simple way um, and it's not super intimidating once you get the hang of it i promise i personally love the macros first app because of the way it lays everything out i think as a visual it just really helps train your brain on how to break down foods um, as far as the macros go and i think learning that skill of once you have gotten in the hang of what an average day looks like for you as far as tracking your goals and hitting those macros it's really neat to understand when you go to log your day and you notice there's a gap say in your carbs what foods so you can kind of go in like your mental note that you've made through building this skill what foods you know are higher in carbs so then okay like now it's not as intimidating to fill in that gap whereas when you're first starting out maybe you need a reference a macro guide where it breaks down like different options for protein fats and carbs or certain snacks so then you know like what the macros are for those specific things i 10 out of 10 recommend taking this on even though it seems kind of intimidating even if it's maybe just writing down a paper journal whatever it takes to have you get on some sort of tracking routine with knowing what exactly is going into your body when you then hopefully connect with a coach in some way about this um, they can try and pinpoint areas of empowerment and fill in those gaps and have you feeling amazing every single day if this is something that you want to hone in on and you just don't know where to start that is one of my specialties so feel free to comment below and i will be happy to have that one-on-one conversation with you if you're looking to crush tracking your food in the new year and yeah so that's my top four tips getting or let's recap a little bit because we know i talk too much about all of them getting back into your routine number one drinking your water hashtag drink up bitches two get right back into your routine don't overthink it just do three movement intentionally move your body for at least i would say 15 to 20 minutes every single day and if you're up for the power move boost track your damn food and as for my random bath bombs this week nothing too spicy gotta be honest but one thing i thought would be interesting to share is that when it comes to the holidays especially this holiday in particular i know for us Money it was super tight and we were balling on a budget, which we make it work, but I'm sure many of you can relate to that. And something that I've started embracing over the last couple of years that has really decreased that stress and expectation when it comes to birthdays and holidays is I have reached out to my closest peeps that I love pouring into as far as relationships go. And I asked if they would be open to exchanging a memory versus a thing or like a tangible gift. So for example, I've had for a couple years now a wreath making tradition when it comes to Christmas time. 
And then when it comes to birthdays and such, I try and connect with that friend and see like what they're into nowadays or if maybe they want to go grab a meal or something. Because let's be honest, as you get older, I mean, some people's love languages is stuff. So if that's like your friend's thing, obviously pour into that if that feels good for you. But for the majority, I say a lot of people, at least in my age range, I just turned 30, hashtag this is 30, you know who you are and how it feels. Um, But yeah, for at least my closest friends, I don't know if it's just who I'm choosing to hang around with nowadays, they were super receptive and actually excited to do something like that. And another fun example, um, because we're in like a self-care mood here in our bath bomb situation, I took my friend Alexis, shout out to my girl, she has a Christmas Eve birthday, so that one's already hard to shop for because it's near the holidays, but she's just also amazing and I can never really pinpoint a gift that encompasses what I actually want to give her like as far as like an emotional reaction goes so this year I recommended or suggested us going to the dry bar shout out dry bar in Cranston Rhode Island and it is a franchise so you might be able to book one near you essentially they wash your hair and they blow dry it and style it however you want 10 out of 10 recommend but anyways instead of doing a birthday gift we did that special thing together and it was super fun we shipped we shipped oh my gosh we sipped on champagne and got our hair did and felt fabulous for the holidays and her birthday so yeah if money and the expectation of gifts and things of that sort stress you out i highly recommend exchanging moments or asking and connecting with your friends if that's something they're interested in even just doing like christmas cookies together or binge watching christmas movies during the holidays with like spiked hot chocolate you never know like whatever floats your boat like your friends will probably more be more receptive and open to something like that than you would expect or anticipate so definitely embrace that if that feels good for you and then one funny little like mom tidbit from this week is oh my gosh we just cannot get a grip on the whole eating food or cam has like been literally wrestling us to change his fucking diaper and to the point where i have to like pin him down or like attempt to entertain him with miscellaneous objects we've now resorted to his nose sucker that plays music and he just like suctions it to his face and it's doing the trick but i feel like having a kid is kind of like attending a chemistry class that shit is hard and no one can prepare you for it. And the second you think you find a pattern to remember something or to like please your child in this example, there is like two exceptions out of the hundred except or lessons to be learned in that chemistry course. And I don't know, that was my intake on chemistry when I took it. It was way above my pay grade mentally, and I just could not handle the random exceptions the second I thought I figured something out. So yeah, I think parenting for me at this point is like taking a chemistry class, which is literally my one regret in life. I took it over the summer one year and I now do nothing to do with chemistry. So basically I ruined an entire summer to take a class that I absolutely hated and did not understand. Um, But check in other chemists out there, parents, if you feel me on this uh, little analogy here. Having a child is like taking a chemistry course where you think you figure it out and then there are exceptions and you just can't catch a grip. (laughs) All right, guys, thanks for joining tonight. Welcome again and thanks for plugging into the Shits and Gigs podcast with your host, Meg Davis, where the vibe is always high, the humor gets raunchy, nothing too raunchy tonight, I suppose, and things get spicy when we talk about food. Have a great night. Toodles.